Then the third project was Hero Motors step through bike. <laughs> And this step through bike was for Argentina. It was for an export market. So we had to really work very hard with their export team, with the clients in uh, Argentina. The student was uh, sitting in IIT Delhi and you know, with a lot of sketches. So this came, gave us a very important inspiration that your visual sketches become very, very important for your design journey. Visualization of sketches help you in the collaborative model for innovation. And you can see how the client wanted uh, in a, a hidden tucked bag inside the side pocket. So this bag actually would go uh, and this you know, side pocket would close. You could, because grocery was very, very important for the step through bike. A lot of women would ride these bikes uh, in, in that country and they wanted the styling to match their you know, uh, perception. So they, they sent a lot of image boards for this work and you know, that's how the whole product had come up. And then the student built a small scale model. This was just uh, one fifth scale model, very small. And with this model, a lot of inputs came. You know, when you make models, the biggest advantage is the collaborative team can give you a lot of comments. They can give you a lot of, lot of inputs to how things will happen. Uh, using those inputs, the student then built a full scale montage. But why is it a montage? What is a montage over a regular sort of uh, uh, model? A montage only has half of it. You don't notice it? Everything is half. You don't have the back side of it. So then because of montage, when you, when you build half by layers, you can also build you know, uh, uh, like layers and there's a foam montage and then it's a full scale montage so you can really stand next to it, take all the inspiration and everything can happen. And this is the full scale a working prototype. And all done within a span of six months. And the company Hero Motors was thrilled to see this progress because in their company, they take three years to build such a thing. And we finished in six months. This happens because of the collaborative teaming, because of the type of you know, uh, intensity, the core team works on the work. And, you know, uh, and here, for example, you can see every part, you know, including the special you know, rear view uh, you know, stands, the basic stand, the, the uh, you know, stands for the you know, pillion rider, the seat design, the you know, grab rail. If, and, and you remember this tuck away pocket, you open this box, you get a large bag which come out of this pocket and you can put groceries on both the sides. A lot of you know, storage was a very important thing and this was completed you know, that time. So while doing all this, we were actually, what we were doing at the back? We were actually assimilating all the learning. What's happening? Whom are we talking to? How are we working on this project? What are the inputs we are getting from the team? What are the inputs we are getting from the external team? All that we are logging, I'm not showing you that log, but I'll show you in the end how the log helped us to build the model. And then the fourth model was the lock for Godrich. Again, Godrich said, we want a lock. We are the largest lock company, but we are threatened again by foreign brands coming in with low cost. So we make a Bertie Bolt, which is 50% of the cost of the current you know, product. So again, the same phenomenon of you know, making a lot of ideas, choosing one idea, which could be an integrated design. Because what's the best way of reducing the cost? Reduce the number of components, right? And then this student actually did shadowing of a lock repairer in Bombay. He actually went behind a lock repairer, worked with him for three, four days. Then he came and told me, so it's, it's, it's really, you know, uh, uh, unfortunate that the lock in Bombay, because of the breeze, the door closes. And if the vertibolt is on, the lock breaks. The lock breaks inside because it is made up of aluminum casting. The inside parts are made of cast, uh, aluminum casting. So aluminum casting because of impact they can break. So he was saying that even if a repair guy comes, he has to replace the lock rather than repair it because everything is broken inside. So that was a big you know, uh, learning from the user study. So the user study became a very important domain of learning from a design point of view. So the user studies became critical understanding of the people, understanding of the end user, understanding of the people who service your product, all that became very critical. So with that, we you know, did this whole journey. And here you can see this Verti lock. And the best part of this was again collaboration between the teaming of uh, Godridge Locks division as well as the teaming at IIT Delhi who are specialists in sheet metal manufacturing. You can see here, this whole thing is one piece. Because the whole thing is one piece, it became extremely low cost and that was using alloy sheet metal. And this alloy sheet metal would, you know, really, you know, give you the complete sort of, uh, you know, one single shot mold. So here the product cost came down by 50% of the total journey. So this is the final product. Again, Gortage also was pretty excited about this project and, you know, we submitted the project to them and we, you know, did all the work forward.
So the fifth one was the most interesting one for me because I think I'll answer some of your questions with the fifth one. So out of the five projects we took as live projects, we wanted all of them to become innovation, right? But our journey in the research was to come up with the initial sector of the innovation journey, which was the seed, the innovation idea, right? The idea is also as important as the total journey which takes forward. I think by now you know because of other case studies. So here, for example, this company is completely, you know, sort of uh, out of market because of the uh, LNT petrol pump. And they wanted to come up with a new product with new systems and new services. We built the same, you know, type of teaming with the student, with the experts, with the company people. We built this whole pump. You can see here, this was inspired by a mobile phone. There's an old Nokia mobile phone inspiration and interesting things that the hose was coming from the top because of that inspiration. And you know, that uh, became a very big USP. A form inspiration became a unique selling proposition for this product because this product was able to deliver more petrol per minute than any other product because of very smooth flow of petrol from the top. Again, because of the use of contemporary materials, contemporary technologies, contemporary idea generation and a collaborative team, we could come up with the prototypes. Again here, within a year, the prototypes were built and they were installed on uh, in Severi in Bombay. The customer who was like the uh, oil companies were extremely glad to place orders and you know became a runaway success and you know became one of the largest selling uh, petrol pumps in the country during those three years of its production. So here we have one case out of all our five cases which, which uh, you know which saw the light of the day. So what is the learning from the real case studies? We got a clear understanding of the effective functioning of the collaborative model. We built a collaborative model which is rough. How do we need to collaborate with everybody? Because you take a project here in IDC when you do projects. What do you do? You're the only guy who's working on the project. At the most, you'll go to the guide to get your inputs from. Then you need to have, we very clearly came up with three separate teams with distinct responsibilities. We realized that there's only three teams of people working. There's a team which is like, working 100% on the project, like I told you, the you know the student and the guides and all were 100%. There's a team which would give a lot of support in the middle. So the support team was very important. And the finally, the uh, team which would give a lot of creative inputs to the whole journey was the creative input team. So that was happening with the three teams. And the roles and responsible team in the idea generation process, you know, had to be, you know, specified and ascertained. So we'll show you the models now from the learnings. So each of these learning, like, you know, uh, as I was showing you the case studies, built up some propositions. Like, for example, the collaborative network, you know, can work on idea generation. See, if you want to build a collaborative network, you must have experts and people from diverse areas to lead to innovative ideas. So that you can come up with, you know, innovative ideas. The proposition two is, you have to divide your idea generation process into steps that will lead to better control in the process as well as generating and nurturing ideas. So when I say steps, you can't say that I've made one idea, immediately go back and build a model. You have to have a lot of ideas, you have to build concepts. Out of the three concepts, you have to choose the right concept by, you know, uh, by the stages. And after choosing that, you need to refine the concept. So those type of steps become very, very critical. That's part of our design process anyway. So that step-by-step -step process, when you have step-by-step -step process, what happens? you can actually get very good inputs from your collaborative team. You can get inputs from your industry. You can get inputs from your uh, uh, partners very effectively. Otherwise, you won't get input because if you show the final result, how will you build their inputs into your results? It's not possible to build, your, build their inputs. So that becomes very, very critical. The proposition three, remember I was talking about visual representation of ideas. The mock, uh, You remember the step through bike where because of the sketches, we could get a lot of creative inputs from all the partners in the collaborative team. Let it be the industry partners, let it be the marketing partners, let it be the partners from, uh, you know, IIT professors. That, that, that was happening in a very, very strong way. And uh, that resulted in evolutionary development of ideas. And the fourth proposition was the flexibility. You have to be very flexible in your idea generation stage where you should be open to ideas and open to changes in the design process. So those changes were also very critical. So let me now show you the model which has been generated out of all these case studies. So this is a very, very, you know, simple model called the collaborative model for new product innovation. So in this model, you have the core team who has a full responsibility of innovation. That is, they're working 100% on the project. If you are doing a design in a company, the core team would be like the, you know, team which is working 100% uh, time on it. The enterprise-wide team would be the team which will be working around 20 to 30% of the time they would spend on the design. 
and the network team would be the ones who just give you simple ideas they would be just spending 5% or 2% of their time they'll be just available for your meetings they'll be your vendors they'll be your you know uh, like uh, technology providers all those so this simple idea of dividing your process into three teams can lead to you know uh, successful innovation and uh, you remember i was talking about the you know stages in the process so you have to have the idea generation here then you have the concept focus you have the multiple concepts here the three concepts you do the concept detailing and then you finally do the refinement so when you have these stages you can get inputs from various members very very effectively into the uh, into the team and here we have the core team the core team has people who can be in the core team can be designers r and d experts management representatives creativity experts depending upon your project you can choose the type of people who will be here in your core team similarly in the enterprise wide team you have finance because finance is a very important aspect of it right you have to make tools you have to make processes you have product planning people you have engineering design people who will be you know a part of your uh, enterprise wide your manufacturing hr r and d so depending upon your project you can choose the type of enterprise wide cross functional team which will be there with you and then of course the most creative uh, inputs came from the network external team remember i was talking about the uh, uh, dual chamber bottle where the pet manufacturers give us a lot of interesting uh, ideas about material similarly in the uh, issues of the uh, you know bike we went to a, a sort of a maruti which was manufacturing deep drawn parts who gave a lot of input to the parts so that becomes very very critical and you know uh, they can all be you know uh, technology expert they could be academic institutes who do research in these areas they can become your very very great source of uh, innovation innovative ideas so this is the composition all put together see these are all the people and here you can see this uh, you know cross at every stage you are meeting everybody so at every stage of your design <coughs> process you are actually collaborating with your enterprise wide team and you are getting inputs from your network external team because of those inputs your you know design would you know uh, map uh, much much more uh, you know carefully so in the collaborative model now putting all the slides together we we see how the composition works so here we have the core team and the core team is represented by this pipe over here then we have the enterprise wide team which is this you know this color over here and then the external team here so there's a complete network across these teams and uh, the functions of each team is mentioned over here in the composition here is the supplier the distributor the technology provider the you know institutes which are giving you various inputs the r and d institutes the consultants the psychologists and the user groups which will help you to build your you know model and the enterprise wide team would be the part of the team which is within the company the product planning the finance the r and d team the engineering team the materials you know team which would support and support you with new materials the marketing manufacturing and human resource the 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 enterprise wide team is very critical in the design phase because you know you should know what type of uh, you know company synergy is there because without a company synergy you can't do innovation and they are the ones which will you know because they are part of the company they will be a lot of support for the innovation to go forward so that is a very interesting you know team and of course we talked about the core team with all the you know designers and collaborators in that so once the composition is there very important aspects is the functions what should each team function so the core team these are all the core team functions the core team you know has to conduct creativity workshops across people they have to capture good ideas across the various teams they have to nurture ideas once you capture idea you have to make sketches and nurture those ideas and create value then you have to also evaluate ideas for example it's very difficult for idea generation across a team and when you generate ideas whatever ideas will you select and reject is a very important challenge here then you have to make ideas work you have to do knowledge brokering bring knowledge into ideas you have to collaborate with other team members that's a very important function and of course visualization and collaboration is part of the functions of the main you know core team then you have the enterprise wide team they also behave as innovation triggers because see enterprise wide team is within the company they have a lot of problems in the current products which they can become like innovation triggers oh the cost should be low or the product should be more user friendly the product should be you know uh, 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 lightweight so all those innovation triggers come from the enterprise wide team they are you know across the disciplines they look at the feasibility very closely they help you with the feasibility and of course they'll help you with evaluating ideas which is very very critical and then we have the external team they provide you you know beautiful ideas for in, uh, you know various inputs for coming up with uh, creative ideas they act as a knowledge broker 
they also are user groups which are your external team they would evaluate your product and tell you how your products will work and of course there are a lot of people who will be material suppliers and other materials and new manufacturing for for their 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 idea is to sell their materials to you but they give you a lot of input to build your you know uh, functions so these are you know by putting the functions now into place you again build your you know whole model so we have a model for the composition and we have a model for the function so putting these two things together we have done a lot of projects and and these projects have been very very successful remember i was telling you about the postbox project we exactly used the model and our you know letterbox became uh, successful we did a palki design for vishnu devi now 100 palki is applying in vishnu devi that became uh, uh, you know very very successful so we we using this methodology uh, we also uh, did this methodology training for companies like ashok leland and for uh, uh, outside sources and they also using this model and it comes very effective the advantage of a model is that you can actually your mark and pinpoint and take care of all the steps so that innovation can happen in the best possible way because we are involving the ceos very early in the phase what's happening is and because of the success stories now people have much much more confidence in using a model to take things forward in the right direction if you want to come up with new new innovations in the field i think one of the question which was uh, you know asked was out of the five projects which of them you know went into the market so the the uh, as i told you the petrol pump uh, you know the the uh, the bullet petrol pump did very well in the market because the company management was very very keen in spending that extra resources on tooling and taking the product forward whereas the other projects for example we didn't uh, see uh, much traction from the company side after the project got over they never followed up with us to take the projects forward but we are happy with the type of progress because generally across the domain they say that generally there is 10% success uh, out of uh, uh, you know uh, out of an innovation journey here we achieved you know in this uh, while we work for the model we achieved a 20% success because one product became uh, a runaway success a very good uh, count in uh, innovation success why is it like that ke some companies even after knowing it's a very innovative product why don't they take it up that's a very very problem. good question in fact that's a big challenge that they all know that is good it's, they know that they're going to give them good market but the biggest challenge comes to what happens to our current line what will happen to the and then biggest challenge what will happen to the investment which we give because it's a new product right they don't know the market they don't know whether it'll sell that's the reason why we are saying that the collaborative network should help us to link with the users very early in the phase so that the users become part of my journey so for example in you know for hero cycles very clearly it was a you know win risky proposition see innovation is always risky right so the risky proposition they're not ready to spend money on the risky proposition but they were ready to spend money on their current welding robots for example so these are the challenges which we face when we take the innovation journey but whereas very clearly if you look at the nano story you know if the top management like ratan tata said nothing doing i need to get this car should be a car but it should be half the price you know then things can go forward in a very effective way so you do really have deep pockets to take in the innovation journey forward can you explain more of the features of the bike you made yeah this bike was very interesting this bike the main features of the bike was that they gave a lot of uh, uh, style uh, requirements from argentina they said these are the type of bikes which are running currently they should be like one of them if you make something completely drastic nobody will use it that was the major you know aesthetic considerations and the other considerations were that you need to have utility which will not hamper the aesthetics for example you can put a basket in front to carry vegetables but the bag should be hidden inside the bike so the, all the bags which are coming which are jetting out which are flexible bags were hidden into the flanks of the bike so when you use the bike normally it looks beautiful and then when you are carrying vegetables they the bags are pulled out of their hiding and you can put uh, you know things and the especially the you know rear view mirrors all of them are stylized they want every component to be stylized in a way to have impact in the market for the for the riders and the step through was a very important component of uh, jitna they step through is a very popular concept there and it they were to dovetail into the step through concept by taking our product over there otherwise most of the products were from japan yeah okay so come then we'll uh, head to our class thanks